Hi, my name is Larry D. Reed, and I'm the host of Larry Reed Live, your most favorite entertainment digital news and talk show that is out here on these social media streets. And we air simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook to an audience of over 300 people, combined audience, over 300,000 people, excuse me. We've had about 32 million views on YouTube alone. Um, and I'm going to be doing some live shows this week. This week, I will be doing some live shows in my studio. So turn your notifications on. Pay attention to what I'm going to be posting on my IG stories here. Um, because I have a surprise. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> Zuri Craig. Now, all of us was watching those Tyler Perry plays, and we were all caught up on those plays, those DVDs. Some of y'all were buying them bootleg. And then, <clears throat> man, we started seeing a whole lot of talent. Some talent we had forgot, some like the bands. Um, in gospel, we knew about the man's Tamala and her husband, David. But Tyler Perry had a niche for grabbing people off the internet and or out of the industry and really allowing them to showcase their talent. And we had seen the viral video of the Brady Bunch with the Craig Lewis band, which is made up of Zuri Craig and also Jeffrey Lewis. And so, bam, Tyler Perry discovered them, put them on. They sang in front of Oprah, in front of a whole lot of different people. And then many years later, we saw them on America's Got Talent. Now, Zuri Craig will put on plays. And I didn't even know it. So about, was it two years? Almost, it'll soon be two years ago. He hit me up. He said, Reed, we love, we love you guys. Um, no, we, we love what you do. And I was telling him, I love you guys. And he said, I want to do a social media thing. I've done this play. I've done that play. I've done that play. He said, and this is in my heart to do. And I was like, uh, okay, cool. And we didn't have a lot of relationship prior to doing the social media Christmas. And he started naming all of these social media, Tim Bay. Um, so, so dot Noel, we call him the missionary. Um, God, he got um, James Wright Chanel. There were so many people. I don't want to get the name of people. There were so many very funny people that have our videos that were going to be in the social media thing. And he said, I want you to be a part. And he started telling me his vision. And then he started planning and looking at the budget and things of that nature. And I was like, um, so how things are going? You know, because the way my mind is wired. So anything that I do, I'm not just talent. I also work on the side of, you know, the writing, the production side, executive producing. So I was very interested in what is going on and how this is going to work. And it really was a passion project that all of us social media influencers just did for him. I mean, there was money involved, but it wasn't a whole lot of money. It was just that Zuri was the type of guy that he was, and we believed in his vision and we liked him um so he said Reed I gotta talk to you about this this budget I said what you talking about he says it's, it's, how much you gonna charge me <laughs> I said look it don't make no sense I can't come to 159,000 rehearsals and then do two shows um on that Sunday for the play or it was a Saturday I said, I just can't do it. So I support what you got going on, but I can't do it because it cost me too much to, to pull away from what I was doing. And But Zuri was 
man, I'm telling you. And I know so many people got other stories and so much more that they can say. But he had a light and he had a, a brightness that was about him. And he was very authentic. He did not put on airs. He was very direct. <laughs> and terribly kind, thoughtful. And he didn't meet any strangers. So we had done all our stuff over the phone. So when I invited him to come over here to the house, well, really, he invited himself. He was like, I'm coming over where you live. You're so secretive. I'm, I'm coming where you live. And we're going to talk about this. And I'm running through your lines because you're not coming to rehearsal. I said, Zura, I can't do the play. I said, I'll just support you. I said, let me give a donation or something. No. I want you to be in the play. I said, I can't. You, I said, I can't, I can't afford it. It's just pulling me away too much. So, when I tell you I was real close not doing it, but it was because of how Zuri was that I couldn't tell him no. And then when he came here, and of course, my family is going crazy. Because they watched the plays all these years. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that. You know. So that was interesting to see them fan out. And then Zori was, Zuri was, and like, I was the star. You know, because we had never met. And he only had been watching Larry live. So it was just fun. It was fun. Fun. We went through the lines here. We met up twice for that. And I think I came to one rehearsal. And then, and then, but I was, he was so passionate about it. He said, I just know I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And things came up. And I said, you know what, Zuri? Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. And nobody knew it. I, I had to make sure that everybody got paid. And I jumped, I jumped. He was like, no, don't. I said, nope. Mm -mm. This is what we're going to do. He said, okay, well, let's go in to do the play as, as a partnership. And that's what we ended up doing. And I was a solid partner. And let's make sure everybody could be honored. Now, this is what I want to say. And it, and it really tugs at my heart because... He's 44, I'm 44. Um, and it really makes me look at the things that I have before me that is unfinished, that needs to be completed, that I have not completed for one reason or the other. I got two books almost totally finished, but I've been dragging my feet all year long. Um, there's a few songs that I need to go ahead and record. There's some shows, ideas that I need to go ahead and get done. And now this may sound really funny, but because it has a stigma, but I want to discuss openly without filter relationships, sex in relationships, open marriages, uh, same sex relationships that are open, some some that are committed, dating a preacher or a musician, y'all having sex, but the church don't believe that. I'm talking sex talk to the 20th power. And I'm and I want to start that on OnlyFans. And I'm dragging my feet about that. But I'm I'm changing all of that. His death to me is a Warning from the universe to get it done because you do not know when your time is up. He had a play that's scheduled, I think, in a few weeks, and they've been rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing. And while they're at rehearsal, they get the word, Zuri is dead. So... It has shaken me up and me coming live to talk about it is working through it because I have a habit of 
when stuff happens, I go here and go numb. And then way later on, I get into the feelings of it. And, man, I'm not going to do that. I mean, starting as soon as tomorrow and maybe some stuff tonight, I'm going to go ahead and start making some calls, paying the last invoice for you know for the book, for one book, for the other book, to get stuff done, and some music, the OnlyFans, and some other stuff. I got to go ahead and get this stuff done. And I think you should be feeling like me. That's what I think. I think you should be feeling like me. I think you need to pay a darn attention to what you are, what you would leave undone if you went right now. Now, if you went right now, what would you leave undone? Do you have, first of all, do you have a darn wheel? Do you have insurance? Do you have um, a living revocable trust? Do you have your mess together? If you happen to get up out of here unexpectedly. You know how many folk I know over the last two years that got a cough <clears throat> or just clearing the throat <clears> throat> and go to the doctor and find out that they, they were in the fourth stages of, of cancer or their liver has stopped working or their kidneys has stopped working. Do you know how many people I know that left their house and got in their car and did not make it back home in one piece. They went straight to the morgue because they were killed in a car wreck. Man. And it seemed like, man, I don't know what's wrong with us because it seemed like to me with the COVID coming and snatching whole churches and, and families and generations out. Seemed like to me we would have been like, Okay, let's really look at life as precious, you know, and really get it done. But I don't think we got it. But this Zuri death, and then the death of another one of my friends that happened a little bit ago, and I know she had a whole lot of plans. It makes me be like, okay, you know what? I want to make sure that my contribution that I was born to make to the world is completed. And I don't want to die full. I don't want to, I want to die empty. I want to have done everything that I know I'm supposed to do. Zuri Craig has given Larry a gift. And, and maybe he's giving you one too. I don't know. But the gift is received and embraced. And I'm going to um, do what the hell I need to do to make sure that I got all of my assignment complete and finished. Do you hear me? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yes. Let me see what y'all saying. Uh, hey, Orlando, how are you? Okay, somebody's trying to come in here with me, I think. But I don't know who you are, and I don't want y'all coming in here with nothing crazy. Spirit is eternity. Life insurance is temporary. What the hell is you talking about? Lord, y'all love to come in here talking some stupid bullshit. You need to get your life insurance so the folk that left here ain't got to worry about paying off the bills in your name or burying your hind end because you ain't got no your no money. You know, a good just a, a simple burial about thirteen thousand dollars. Did you know how he passed? I don't know if that's important. How you doing, Yana? Ex sister in law. <laughs> you sure better have life insurance. I'm skeptical of Instagram, so I don't know about inviting people. You sure better not. That's why I'm looking at it like I don't know who this is. Yeah, Miles Monroe did say die empty. He wasn't the first one to say it, but yeah, he did say it. 
talking about spirit is eternal. So you're going to be on OnlyFans sucking peeing Larry. That's crazy. Now you know good and well. I'm not going to be nowhere sucking peeing. If anybody ever tell you that Larry Reed has sucked their peeing or is sucking peeing, that's a lie. Well, hold on for a minute. I can't say that because I have, but they were sucking mine so good. So I, I obliged. But that was... One time. <laughs> Ow! Why y'all get me off subject? Can I get to the... Can I stay serious? I don't need to be reading in the comments. Oh, let me block you anyway, because you probably trying to be funny. Let read on certain opinion. I'm a top. Bye, ho. Okay. Let's see. Um... Let me see. Uh, that's what y'all saying. Yeah, she came. She she came. Uh, she's a, a troll. You know these these people out here in these streets. They so obsessed with sex, for well, other people's sex, and they pushed be full of dead men bones. You know how many bones her puss lively had. Up in the inside of her, a open sepulcher. Are you hearing me? Yeah, the people there says I think folks just want the fruck me. I think that's what it is. They really want the fruck. I understand it though. I probably, I probably would make me horny too. I mean, cause I'm just so transparent and open and honest and kind and funny, and tall, six two. 200 pounds, dressed nice, smell good, take care of my children and my baby mama, my parents. I would be horny about me too. How we get here? Let me get back to Zuri Creek. Jesus lamb. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm feeling. That is how I'm feeling. Dead man's bones. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You never looked at it like that. See, that's what that's why I need to be following the prophet. Mm -hmm. Some I'm comedy, but I, but I'm common sense too. You be woke up listening to me. People who love to question others' lifestyle be about their that life secretly. <laughs> well, you when anybody tell you anything like that, that's they just lying. That's just this. This is not true. I have told y'all what I have done. And what I might be willing to do. And it ain't that. <laughs> hey baby, how you doing, Tarina? Um, the Bible readers know about dead men's bones. That's right, you sure do. Financial legacy is good, but getting your spiritual house in order is more important. Anything else is remedial. Uh, I, I, also, you the one that said what you said earlier. Now I get what you were trying to say. But let me say this now. St. Derek 413. Financial legacy is spirituality. Y'all might need to type that in there. That's spirituality. It is improper to not have your finances in order when you live in, let alone when you die and you ain't got your mess together and folk got to um, do gold farmers and stuff, that, that is sin. Hope the, a sin. Somebody said he looked younger than 44. Y'all know black don't crack. There ain't no cracking about to happen to no black. Mm-mm. Oh, pretty teeth like yours. You like them? Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, Larry, excuse me for being off topic, but you look great in that lighting. It do make me a little filterated. But back here, you see that I'm, I'm darker. But, but here, give me a little, it should bring my red from my, my mama's side of the family where the Indians is at. It, <laughs> you know, in the country. You light skin or got good hair or a little red skin. Y'all, you got some Indian in you? More than likely, it was master. 
that them fruit probably three or four generations back. What you say now? Your ride is here? Yeah, I'm My daughters had a friend boys over to the house today, and so this is the last one that is leaving. I actually like this one. I hope she gets serious with them because I like this one. Um Oh yeah, these no, this these are good these are mm -mm. Let me tell you about my teeth. On another live. But this is the reason why y'all need to get on my OnlyFans. On my OnlyFans, I'm gonna be telling all my business. I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna keep all I'm, my my business is going on OnlyFans. What's that, baby? I'm starting the OnlyFans not to show peen and bread best. Not that. I'm gonna be having conversations about like how how old are you? Fifteen? And how old are you? Fifteen. Let's suppose if y'all was, you know, you're thinking about, you know, doing sexual stuff. See, my channel is going to be talking to your parents on how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and even some of y'all going to probably, gonna, my daughter's probably going to get on my OnlyFans, although they don't halfway watch my show, but they know how their daddy is. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to keep it 100%. 100% because they're going to be talking about sex. Have your parents talked to you about sex? No, I haven't did y'all hear that? He said no, had to figure out on his own. See, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping all that in our community. In our community, that's the black community problem. Yeah. We do not talk yeah. about sex, sex as we're coming up for edu in an educating way. That's it's not, not good. About sex, it's, just, it's like you, you usually can't talk about anything. Really. Well, that's, that's another problem in the black yeah. community. Your mama's a spiritual woman? I mean, I guess she's Christian. Yeah, so... Use this Christian home where we don't talk about sex. We'll tell you, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. But then you go out there. They don't know you tell them to, not to do it. You go out there to do it and test us the idea. But if you touch my daughter, I'm going to kill you. Okay? All right? You'll be dead. I'm just playing. I'm not gay. <laughs> oh, I ain't going to kill you. I am, though. I am. But I can't just put it on camera. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna say I won't, but I will. <laughs> so, baby, have some gun. Look at my bag, and if you see a dollar and take it, your throat gonna itch and grow hair. Alright, go in there. It's denting nice, so knock in the thing. What you need gum for after the bully? Huh? What you had in your mouth? What? Okay, go get it. These children nine days, I tell you true. <clears throat> um Y'all know them churches is on OnlyFans. Y'all don't know that. <laughs> Cheer. You you need to know it. Um Let me see here. So Roz Love says she didn't get none of that kind of talk. See what I'm saying? That's that's why I'm, I'm gonna change that. You can go ahead and sign up on my OnlyFans, but that price is gonna change in about a month. Right now, you can get on it for eight dollars, eight dollars and twelve cents. But it's gonna change because I was doing some calculating, and that's not gonna pay me enough for my time. I'm courting the future. I carry on so bad. You know what? I'm not putting on for y'all. This is how I am every single day. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. Yeah, this I, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm dead serious. Zoe, come open the door for your for your company. I mean, the gate. He, the car trying to get out, trying to come get you. Huh? The, he out there? No, my mom out there. Your mom out there. Yeah. Uh, um, um, Zoe, um, Nancy, somebody, his mom is out there. How y'all gonna walk back upstairs, is it? Oh my god. Zoe, you just hit that two, three times. See, that's what I'm talking about. Then it's gonna freeze. All right. Um, damn, Larry, why you ask her that question, sir? I'm her daddy. That's why. Um,. Not what you had in your mouth. <laughs> well, um, 
Bear Reads. So I gotta, I gotta ask, because she might need to um, put some peroxide in her mouth. She did that, because you know that killed bacteria. I'll make sure my children know. Um, yes, we need to go to the doctor more. We do. Um, it Patreon is $12.99. That only fans should be more. You write roses. I'm going to go in there and change it before y'all go there and sign up. Hey, Jay Todd, I'm going to tell you I'm so proud of you. And I'm going to tell you one I think something that you do, Jay Todd, that you don't have to do because it's, it's... Because people, when you say my name, either it's good or bad or they're happy and sad. But see, you know me. People just know the entertainment show. And there's no me talking and rambling like this. But see, you know how I live my life. And you know that every morning right here, you hear him screaming, hollering, speaking in tongues, or you just need to know what's going on even if you can't hear it. That's how I live my life. And that's never going to change. If you're my Patreon, you know you know how I live my life, what I believe and what I practice. But if folk out here don't know shit, see, they, they only see that, that right there. That's all they see. And so they think that's that's it. I have duality, and I've embraced my human and my holy, my my um, um, consecration and my humanity, um, my power and my perverseness, uh, my spirit and my flesh. We're dual. Let's see. Um, let's see here. I was talking about Zuri, but you, them, everybody, done took me off into something else. So, um, Palmer said he's my senior pastor. And I love him, and I love you too. What you had in your mouth that you need? Gun? <laughs> okay. Are you returning to second season of the series with Yolanda Adams? I want to tell y'all what I heard. I heard for some higher ups that we got a second season. Now, I remember, can you remember on the show, they built my studio. It was not in my studio. They built my studio in the warehouse. And it was so nice. And I told him, I need one of this. You know, I got more than one studio. I said, I want to make one of my studios either where I done finished building them all out. But I still wanted it. I wanted to have it. You know, I may put it in one of them. And they said, uh, only thing you can take is, is, take is the mug. Go get a second season. We're going to need this set again. So I'm pretty sure I'll be a part of the second season. I mean, hell, there was eight series and I was in five. I mean, eight episodes, I was in five of them. I would like to think that they would need me to come back for at least two. Now, if the writer's smart, what they would do is write me into the main cast. I was, I would have been guest star. They would write me into the main cast. That way you can grab all my audience, because my audience will watch. Can we sign up now on the phone? Yes. Onlyfans.com slash Larry Reed Live. I think that's what it is. But I'm going to change that price. So if you get in now, next month you get billed. It ain't going to be $8. Um, absolutely. I'm better today because you, man, this is fat. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. How you doing, Pastor um, um, McFeeders? I just call him Philip King PLM. Larry, what's your thoughts on the state of the church? It's declining rapidly. You must be new. You you know my 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 feelings on it. I've been on the whole church thing since I done started the show, 2015, baby. Um. Right, I need to be in the um, main cast. Okay, so let me close with what I was saying about Zuri. Zuri's 44. I'm 44. We was right here in this room. He was right in here. Oh, man. I hope I don't get sad. Okay, he was right in here in this room, sitting right here, playing and singing. Oh, God, that's, that is a little sad. Mm. But let me tell you this. Go ahead and do what it is that you know that you have been call to do and what you're sitting on get up off that thing and get it done 
That's a, that was a little sad. Yep. That's why I don't like going to funerals. I I don't I really I don't like going to funerals. If I can get out of going to my mom and dad's funeral whenever that happened, I would. I don't like doing going to funerals at all. If they plan the funeral and I have to be on set like I was for my friend Shay's funeral, I'm going on set. Mom and dad will be already gone then. I done, I took care of my friend. I, I retired them, but my mama's still working. So I'm, I'm, I wouldn't want to go. Y'all can call that selfish and call it whatever you want to call it. I, I would not want to go. No, I did this room. Now, see, I used to have a, de- a design anointing. I've done this whole room. Larry did this. I picked out everything. I did it. Now, you used to be able to do that. But see, I only tell y'all this. I went to high school with my mom when she was, my dad was working and me and my sister went. So me and my sister learned like how to do relaxes and cut hair. When I was a teenager, I, I, could, I, I could do some everything. I can start a garden, cut grass, bust wood, crop tobacco. You know, I've, I'm country. You know, so, and there was a lot of women. So I learned, I learned how to do a lot of different things. But I don't have it no more. So now I have people to come and de- paint, design, because all my stuff went into writing songs and music now. So, yep. Mm-hmm. I did this room. <laughs> oh, and I did the downstairs room. I did my bedroom too. Let me just see it. Jeez. If you watch reading things my way, y'all done seen everything. Now it's messy. And I got the curtains pulled. But I done all that. In fact, I got that same thing in my LA play. I don't know that. I got the curtains pulled, though. You see that boy here right now? That's what they used to pitch Jesus in the side. I took it to him, threw it from them. <laughs> of course, y'all know I got chairs in here. And you know, this is my wall to the ancestors. And I said, well, I do lives from there sometimes. I be sitting right now. That's my bathroom. I ain't taking it there dirty. I did all right, didn't I? I designed it would have done better. I painted some walls and stuff, but when I looked at them, that price quote, I said, um, <coughs> I can pay contractors with that. Um, I'm not, I'm not into, Larry is frugal. I always have been. That's because of ethylene reed. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold a dollar. I can hold a dollar like this. Well, let me explain what I mean. Cause that's not true. I'm a liberal and free. I'm not in fear surrounding money, but I do not. I don't. I don't just. I know what. In fact, let me say this. If a if a quarter missing, I know it. I'm going to say it like that. Mm-mm. And the two quarters get missing, we, everything stops. Where is that 50 cent? See? Mm-hmm. Now, one thing they didn't teach me is how... To, well, they did show me... No, they didn't. You know why? I never learned how to cook. So I can make a, I can make shoe bread. Y'all know what it is? Cause mama make it all the time. I know how to make this um cream strawberry cheese pie thing, and I know how to make um 
Well, you know what? That's it, Jerry. Oh, and I do a good salad. I can, I can mix a salad. Sweet, salt, fruit, and... I'm good with that. That's it. <laughs> Anything else, you're going to be hungry. Fooling around with me. I had a go-to store. I am new. Do you agree that Noel Jones is the greatest preacher of our generation? Hell no. Mm -mm. When it comes to the art of preaching, probably the top five. But no. I, I don't get into... um. I like prophetic, didactic, preaching. Yeah. That's what I like. Um, and it has to be that perfect combination of the two. If it ain't that, I'm not interested. I turn the channel. Mmm. Larry R. Give it up. I, that's the understatement. I live to give. Then I pay my bill. Yeah, I don't spend. First of all, I don't spend. I circulate. I don't move haphazardly around money. Great. Say your only pay, only page fans. Okay, go ahead and sign up now. I'm gonna drop the advertising little piece. Here's what the advertising is, is gonna look like. I'm going to show y'all this exclusive IG. You getting this IG? Um, let me see here. I forgot to post that picture of my mom and daddy and the girl. Um, here you go. Um, let me see. I'm about to send, I'm about to let y'all see that right now. But, yeah. Here it is. Okay. This is what it's going to look like. Can y'all see that? Uncensored. Conversation. Sex, sexuality. And it's not just me. Ooh. I found the OnlyFans worker who's a masseur. And you know, you know, this stuff ain't haphazard. You have to work. I already got that lined up. I got to ask, I'm going to text T.S. Madison, just ask her to come on. Any question you can think of, because this, this is a whole other world right here now. We are going to talk about, and I'm not going to censor. I am going to talk like I'm talking to my children and those around me. I'm going to forget the cameras on. It's going to be streaming live over there. And I am having them come, and, and you'll be able to ask me questions. You'll be able to ask me behind a paywall, Sexual questions, married people that are having problems in their sex life. I'm doing all of that. <laughs> yeah, cause you, but see, I have done that for years. I've done therapy and counseling for years. I, mean, I have a whole degree in it. So I'm going to use it. Yes, I enjoy the state fair. What I ate, everything that I could fit in my mouth. If I could fit it, I ate it. Shoe bread, S H E W bread. It's good. You know, I might make some for um and the what well, high donuts, but well, Reformation. Um, um. Do I like Joe Austin? As a person, he seemed to be nice. As a preacher, hated it. What was that? The men on film on Living Color. <laughs> no. Who's my favorite preacher? Uh, I got they dead. Let me see anybody living around here that I won't mind listening to. My mentor's teaching is off the chain. His preaching, boring, puts you to sleep. For me, somebody else. Hold on, let me explain. I can sit there and listen to him talk all day long in the monotone voice. Might get a little sleepy, but I'm listening to a lot of information. But when it comes to somebody who's going to come to the church to come preach, because they're going to, it's going to be prophetic. He's prophetic and he's didactic, but he don't have a lot of charisma. So I left that off. I want them to be prophetic, didactic, and, and have charisma, be charismatic. 
I don't have much of that. But I'd rather listen to him probably before any other preachers out here on these streets. I'm think. I enjoy Carton's teaching. He's prophetic and didactic. And he's a little bit charismatic. He's more charismatic than Bishop, but he's still a little bit boring. Um, let me see. Who would it be? Now, I'm going to tell you, I used to love Jackie McCullough. I think Jackie McCullough might be it for me, but I ain't listened to her in years. But I think if she ain't changed nothing, oh, I need a bottom. Y'all know she changed preacher. Um, oh, T.D. Jakes. <laughs> Not new T.D. Jakes. You know, everybody quit praying. This stuff ain't the same way. Mm. I mean, they still say good stuff. It just don't feel the same. Let me see. Um, oh, Joyce Myers. I enjoy Joyce Myers' teach. I mean, she, I mean, she just gonna talk. She's very practical. Who is my favorite female and male artist right now? Gospel or or secularly? OnlyFans. OnlyFans. dot com slash Larry Lamb. Hey, Vonda, is masturbation considered sinful? Not in itself. It can become sinful. And for some people, it's absolutely a sin. Because what is sin? Anything that does not serve God's greatest good for me and for others is a sin. Is that real behind you? Oh, the wood ain't. The fire is. Um... You say you saw what Jake's were about to cast out that demon today? Yeah, somebody sent me that clip. Let me tell y'all something. I ain't even seen the clip. But let me tell you this here. And, they, and then they say that he was about to cast it out. He sent um, somebody back to the stage. One of his children's uh, husband or something like that. Y'all be talking about folk casting out demons. They said Sarita done it too. And she, and she said... She pointed and said, See, this is what I'm talking about. I love Sarita and Jakes for what they have contributed. That ain't a bit more cast than that, no demon. Than somebody pissing on your leg and tell you it's raining. If that's Casting out demons, then rain is dry. You hear me? If you was in one of my services, just one, or some other exorcist or somebody you know, you would know what casting out a demon. <laughs> that ain't it. So sorry. Um. Said Corn can preach. I mean, he's got the charismatic preach sound down, but, you know. No thanks. I'll never forget when he said, don't get into a pissing context with a skunk. That's my new motto. Oh, I think it was Bishop that said that. Um, oh, Jasper Williams is has great preaching style. Ain't saying nothing. But it's the old Baptist preaching. They, they don't feed you. It'll stir you up. Jacqueline is beautiful. Dorinda is beautiful. That used to be my... my but we had a run-in and she blocked me. Um, Lord Tyrese! <laughs> Joseph Myers give and wait presentation. Yes, and it'd be good too. Can you come on? I will wait a, a, a gam minute podcast yeah email info at the mbn network.org and, and i'll send three dates and if i can do one i will yes y'all need to join patreon and be asking me all these darn questions um pastor your church got mad because you didn't faint when he touched your forehead you see what i'm talking about Mm 
question. You got a question? All right. Well, if you put a question, you go down in the question part. Ty Tribbett can preach. You know, I, I actually, actually, I would have to agree with that. Now, some of the things he be saying, I don't agree with. Like, because he... And Deidre does this too, because Deidre can preach. It, what they be saying, sometimes they say something so religious. I'm like, but Deidre, and you tie y'all out the box. Why are you, why are this so religious right here? But other than that, I would have to agree with that. Oh my God, I enjoy Miles Monroe teaching. Yeah, Deidre had in the past though. He sure will. In fact, I was introduced to Deidre Hatton many years ago as Prophet Hatton. And he was prophesying and preaching. Later on, he'd done Chain Breaker. I think, myself included, we just don't take God as seriously as we need to because he's not here in the flesh. I don't know if we need to take God seriously. That sounds like... A little fear mongering and a little of that religious God. I think we should take relationship with God and ourselves more seriously. The relationship is what we should take serious. Him, he's a he's a loving, kind, wonderful God. Juanita Bynum lost her oil after she started cutting up them bad them bed sheets with pillowcases. You know, I ain't even doing that with you. <laughs> I'm not even doing that. Uh do you think Kimberrell career is done? No, because the church is not done. Once the church is done, it probably is. And she gets some some um shut up loud as you can round about her, her mouth part. Then maybe I mean she can rebound because ain't nobody throat like hers. Nobody's. Nobody throat like Kim Barrett. Oh, excuse me, Jesus. I said I won't go to them more. Like Kim. Burrell. Camp. Oh, we're not going to talk badly about Miles Monroe. We're not talking badly because I got an opinion. He t he was a great teacher. Somebody talking bad about him? I don't know how much. You know, he was actually a great preacher when he was getting that preach thing. Oh, I'm going to tell you who I enjoy. I'm so glad we had this conversation so I can put this at the top of my list. I enjoy Neil Ellis. Oh, I do. Oh, yes, I do. If I, if, yes, I enjoy Neil Ellis, Bishop Neil Ellis. I'm not even reading that high perspectives art, but that is very funny. But I'm not reading that. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, question. Um, I was raised as the church of God and cash. Oh my God. She said she was raised in the church of God and cash. <laughs> Why don't we make clear the difference between sin and doctrine? Oh my God. That's, you need to come to Patreon. That's such a loaded question. And what I'm going to say is probably going to disrupt and interrupt, um, some of your belief, but most of the doctrines in the church are the doctrines of devils. See, this is why I, I can't come out here and have this conversation like this because this is going to cause a problem. I can go on Patreon, but I can't do this out here. But I done said it, so we're going to let it sit. But most of the doctrines of the church, they're the doctrines of devils. They are. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Tony Evans is, I don't know his ministry. How much time we got up here? Leave this in picture. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. You have to come back to Patreon. Why you left us for? I don't know. We want you back if you left us easily. I love when Larry get to talking like this and make my heart smile. I ain't got no business of here running my mouth like I am. 
Um, hey, baby mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question. Oh, you have to send a badge before I can, when you do your question in the question part, I can put it up where everybody can see it, but it have to be a badge first. Well, let me get back to what I was saying, son, get off this, because y'all don't want me all around the moon. Um, Zuri Craig 44, me 44, it shook me and made me think about um, getting these projects that I have just sitting and taking my ever-loving time to go ahead and get them done. Because I, I don't know. Man, he had so many dreams. When he was here, like I said, he was sitting right over there playing the piano. We were there singing and stuff. Um, he had a lot of things he needed, he wanted to do. And it's unfortunate. Do I have Clubhouse? Yeah, but I don't go on much. You can follow me there. Larry, I've been working with you since 2019. Thank you, Teresa. Everybody type, get it done. Why are the people asking to come live with me? Maybe on another live, you guys. It's a tremendous loss. Why did T.D. Jakes hand over to his daughter? It's like a business. Hell yeah. He built the woman down loose thing. So he handed over to her so it don't fall and hit the ground. She's a woman that's been loosed. So he gave it to um, Sarah so that she can go ahead and do what needed to be done. She is a whole woman that's a, she's a loosed woman. Pass the thing over to her because y'all know T.D. Jakes was not God's um, original plan. It would have been a woman to lose other women. But the thing came upon him because God was going to use him to create a platform for women like Jackie McCullough. Um, I own a lock, lock, Juanita Bynum, Paula White, Cheryl Brady. He platformed all these women. And so it's been preached out. It was preached out by the women. It's done. His assignment is come during pleat. Now, Sarah is going to take it to a whole nother level. And she's going to go a whole nother way. You see, she already started out apologizing for all the stuff that done happened under the old regime in the church. She is a loose woman. You know, she was, she was bound up because she got pregnant real early. And everybody was side-eyeing her and, and looking to the left and to the right and whispering, talking about her. You know, she, she was caught and she bound and chained. And, but Jesus said, free, she got loosed. You don't know that story. She free. Didn't his daughter, husband, get in trouble for some stuff? His, his other daughter, Cora. She, her, yeah. Mm-hmm. Larry, why they ain't loose Cora yet? <laughs> Y'all not get me on that topic. I done covered it. You can go watch the show. I don't want to keep talking about it because it, I don't want to. I know it's hard to get over stuff when stuff like that happens. So I, I do this. I commentate on what's public, but I try not to just keep going on and on and on and on. You know, sometimes I do, but I try not to because I don't want to. We're no bad at patience. Mm -hmm. Me too, Vonda. I'm excited to see you. They told me that Cora had a, a a doll dressed up in a in a suit on the in the pulpit the day. Is that true? No, for be lying. You can't really trust what for be telling. I ain't seen nothing. Yeah, I feel bad for Cora too. I mean, but I had to do the story. And I tried to get her. We talked several times before. But, so I was trying to get her to tell me her size so I could put that in the commentary. But she didn't say shit. So I couldn't help her out. So if I'm doing commentary and I know what you got to say about it, then I'm going to put it in my commentary. Because otherwise my commentary just go out. And I have to assume, you know, what's up if, it ain't, if that part ain't public. Don't y'all never do nothing like that. When the media call y'all, make sure you put, put something on it. Unless it's something you don't need to put, put no voice on it. 
Mm-hmm. Somebody said, you said you heard she still played with Cabbage Patch Dolls. Yeah, you know, she put it on the internet. And she named those Cabbage Patch Dolls. And then the daughters that she, the daughter and the son she got from the other women, she named them that the same name. It's on Twitter. It may still be up there. She named those the names that she had chose. Yeah. Oh, Naida, you already on OnlyFans? <laughs> okay, I'm coming. I'm coming with the heat. How does Zuri pass? I, I don't know if... um. I don't think I need to say that. He, he passed. He, he died because he died. It was, it was dead. It was death that killed him. Ain't that enough? We know it's his hell. I'm semi-new to you. So do you do Christian commentary and reporting mostly? That's what I'm known for and that's my niche. But I discuss everything. Everything. Um, it used to, I used to have two other people on the platform. One covered politics, one covered sports. And then I done um, pop culture and entertainment news. And but the show ended up being just mainly that. But when it comes to church stuff, the reason why I'm like known for the church stuff, because I was a traditional church pastor for 20 years. I still pastor now and a gospel, still a world nominated gospel artist. So when I start talking concerning those things, it means something because, you know, I'm degreed, educated and experienced. So it ain't me just jaw jacking, you know, and, and being absurd. No, it's some real perspective. My commentary is, um, not just comedic, but it's common sense. And it's raw and controversial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, he died because he died. Death killed him. Come on, how he died? He died by, by death. What killed him? Being dead. I don't think we want to know too damn much. That ain't your business. Why you want to know all that? He ain't here. You here. Now complete your work. What's the name of my church? <clears throat> Reformation Church of Atlanta is a digital cyber church. Larry Reed is the pioneer of leaving the brick and mortar and going 100% um, digital. I done it in 2015 and prophesied to them hoes that in 2020, the church was going to change forever and everybody needed to build in the cyberspace, but them dizzy hoes did not listen to me. So as a result, when 2020 came and they couldn't run to their church no more, everybody remember what the hell I said, and my whole following grew four times in like 90 days. And then every 45 days, we were generating a million dollars. Every 45 days. So sometimes you have to sit like a miss and like you wrong and off until folk catch the hell up. And I'm used to doing that. I've been doing that my whole life. So um, I've always been a trailblazer. And you, can, you, you have to be in Patreon before you can even put in an application to join. It's not like these churches out here. We, we put you on a two-year thing with counseling, coaching. And if you're not producing in two years, we give your slot over to somebody else and release you back to whatever you, you want to do. Because clearly, it clearly it's not to grow in advance. So... You say, you know what, people be getting that when they ask that. Right, that's why I said what I said. He died by death, hell. That's, that's what killed him, being dead. So my thanks for letting me know without being a smart ass. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm a smart mouth. And um, you, don't ask me nothing if you... 
ain't gonna really like the way that I I come at it. I don't mean no harm, not not in this, not in this instance. I just said what the hell I said. Do you think we will ever have another pandemic like the last one? Yes. Um. Hey, Claude Hamilton, comment so everybody can see who's behind all my graphics and stuff. Y'all go over there and hire him and get your mess together. Also, sometimes you see me use Blair Monique. These, these, they're crazy. They profits in that thing. But let the record show. Claude won all that when I first got with him. I pushed them birth Claude out. Now, he'll put it out there like he the creative genius and he just dropped from heaven. No. That gift connected to Apostle Reed many years ago when he was doodling. <laughs> I thought he was going to say something in that comment session. That was 2011. So he's been with me for years. So your stuff ain't going to look like my stuff because it, it's the union of the anointings coming together. And if you ain't bringing that to the table, it's all on him. But see, I bring to the table and I say, Claude, and Oh, Clyde, you got to be here too. The two, I got. I'm doing a show. I'm gonna tell you who it is. They text me today. It might break the internet. We're gonna be in the big studio. Okay. How is progress and growth measuring the church, baby? You need me in Patreon. You ask me Patreon, Chris. Don't be giving this kind of stuff out here like this. Progress and growth is measured in the church by its members. You should, it's just the thing. Church like y'all do church is not the way I do church. And I've never done church the way y'all do church. My church has always had a coaching mentorship aspect in it, member by member. And if you won't get in with that program, I remember one time asking 75 people to leave my church. Gave them letters. I all said, God, by, goodbye. God bless you. So I ain't never been. I never. I think a church is supposed to be. In the earth. An example and a reflection. Of. The kingdom of God. Like a spiritual university in the earth. So what the hell? It's for it's for church people. I know y'all talking about church is a hospital. All oh, that's some bullshit. That ain't ain't none of that. Jesus said in the Bible ain't said it. It's just not true. Mm -mm. The the church is for the gathering of the darn saints. And when ants come in there, there should be a display and an exchange that causes the ants to want to become a saint. But y'all dizzy hoes done made the church another place to go to like the club for socializing. Done put coffee places in there and everything in there to just chill out and just have a good good, good time. He go in there and send a motivational speech. Now y'all make memes out of them, put clips all over the internet of these folk um, preaching. And it ain't preaching, so they don't redefine preaching. It's just motivational speaking. It's basically talking a whole lot of memes to go viral. And y'all say, oh my God, he anointed I just think with all that. I want to I want to talk about what that pastor says so bad. Talking about women got that for up their husbands really, really good so they don't go cheat. That's basically what he said. And I, the way I seen them folk up on that church of my angles, I don't see no lies, no lies detected. You know what? They took they took our folk from the plantation to the church and told us we were free and we ain't. We're not free. Until we get a God revelation, and I'm not talking about blue-eyed, long-haired Jesus. Get a revelation of God that changes who we are and prospers us. If our faith and what we believe in is not prospering us, y'all, we, we, we ain't in the right, we, we ain't getting the right doctrine. That's why I said what the other question somebody asked me earlier talking about. Uh, the doctrine of devils or something like that. The doctrine of devils is what most of y'all learning in your churches. All right. Oh, I ain't got time for this. I only talk like this right here. This is for Patreon. When are you coming to Philly to minister? Doubt it. Um, <clears throat> I don't accept a lot of preaching engagements. And when I do, it's like I go there to just pay off something. 
Um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not really, there. it's not like going to preach. It's like, it's, it's going to assist. Um, but I do preach and prophesy, but I end up leaving a seed. I don't be taking. I mean, cause a church can't afford to invite me to preach. <laughs> it, I mean, what are you going to pay me to come there? You got to think. I got to prepare before I get there. I don't know how many hours. Then I'm going to get there and probably preach an hour or two. And then the travel there, the travel back. You cannot afford. Okay. Let me, let me, let me put it like this. I'm five thousand, five to ten thousand dollars every sixty eight minutes. So tell me who who is gonna if you're gonna pay somebody like that, you probably gonna go call one of them big preachers, J Ma or them or something. Cause you can't afford me to come. That's you know, so if I go, it's because God done told me accept this appointment, and I know I'm going there on the assignment for a specific thing. So it's gonna make sense for me to be going. I'm gonna be going. You said Matthew C. Stevenson crushed them all. What's going on with him? Hey Barbados. Claude to my wait a minute, you know I already got something to say. Yeah, you do, but don't mean it's the truth. Now let me call, call witnesses. I got your old sketches. Our anointing together. But yeah, y'all need to hire him now. Cause now he's you know, he on he is the creative genius. Um, what about Matthew Stevenson? That hat is popping. I know that. The church is God's educational institution, period. Right, Claude? Teach the people. Hey, Kyla sings. You're singing, sir. Um... The Larry that you see on Instagram is literally a small glimpse of who he is to even want to say that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Larry, I cussed a little. Can I apply to church? Yes. In our church, we are fully human. But we pray. We fast. We prophesy. We speak in tongues. We pray in tongues. We are givers. We're entrepreneurs. We're actors. We are models. We are artists, R&B artists. We are gospel artists. We all of that. So, same gender loving people. We got married women, married men, all this. We are a church for real. Not a cult. Mm. Lord, don't even get me on that See, they're false teachers if they're not preaching the kingdom. I get what you mean. But you remember when um, Moses and them folk was coming to Moses and talking about they two prophets in the camp prophesying. Um, they ain't got no business prophesying. He said, let them folk prophesy and do what they're doing. If they if they talking about Jesus and they meaning to be, um, their purpose to be positive and to help, let them do what they do. I mean, there's a school for thought versus thought namely everybody the false. T- y'all be saying for false prophets and they ain't even prophets. Y'all be saying for false pre- um, teachers and they ain't even teachers. In order to be a false teacher and a false prophet, you have to have been an authentic, God sent, God anointed and appointed teacher or prophet. What makes people think false prophet means somebody say they're a prophet and they're not. That's a liar. But a false prophet is somebody who has left. The authentic office and employed, been employed by heaven to speak what he say speak, and they then went talking on their own. That's a false prophet. This is not what I do out here. You have to go to my Patreon to get taught. I know y'all pastors ain't teaching y'all nothing. It's so sad. It's because they don't know nothing. But they don't have to know nothing to pastor y'all dumb asses. Y'all some dumb asses. Not y'all in here, but some of y'all. Maybe some that will watch this back. But my folk ain't done. I said there is. Let me see. My Patreon ain't but $12. You can't afford that. Please don't come. Um, mm, invite the pastor on your show so he can say what he meant. What pastor? Y'all don't come over here talking to me about no, um, I don't care nothing about these other folk that y'all care about. 
I do stories on people called that go viral. There's a few that I actually care about. And that particular person y'all just mentioned in my comment session, I don't have. Listen. I do not have any care and concern to give to them beyond I mean just hoping that they they do best best they can in life. I don't have nothing else for them. Nothing at all. Reformation Church is um digital. Um what's the mm, Thank you, Kendall McDowell. What I think about Kanye West, he needs his medicine. And his, he needs a handler. Um, oh, I'm career being so forgive my questions. All right, yeah, all right. You say you were interviewing someone. I was asking, is it Matthew? Oh, no. No, it's not Matthew. It's Stevenson. It's a bit way bigger than that. Um... Mm, false prophet and teachers pervert the truth. <sighs> Lord have mercy. It's more than that. You you run it with a scripture in Revelations. Um, you it's more than that. Come on now, y'all. You know it's more than that. <laughs> well, I would like to think that you should know it is. Mm -mm. Are any of my folk in here? What from Patreon or Reformation Church? If you are, sound off. Larry, I thought you come away from this toxic positivity preaching. That's not nice. I don't know what you what what you're saying. Retype. Mm. Do you like Lambert Gates? Oh, from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh no, you mean um, Brian Carn, Pastor? I don't know him. I just know his name. I don't know him. What's up, Cadrius, Saltus? When y'all gonna do the song? Is, is you a line musician? Do I need to pay you to do the song? Just tell me. Um. Oh, yeah, they in here. They lifting their hands and letting it be known who they is. Gee. Let's see. Um. Uh, uh, is that the last question y'all got? Because y'all done took this thing off about Zuri and it, be, it became some everything. Mm. Hey, KG, new vibe. You Now, you in Fayetteville. How are you? Well, you used to be. See, there's a whole lot of Patreon, Patreon people in here. I don't feel nothing when Brian Carn preached Larry. You know what? You off the chain. <laughs> I don't either. But when Brian Carn sing, I have I he have sang and I and I and I just got taken into because he know how to go back old and and bring and make you remember how it used to be. And so when that happens with me, that just takes me right on. Where everybody moved on from Zuri when you said he died by death. Yeah, the folk would ask me what he died of. Death? What killed him? Being dead? You asking for business like that? You born in Raleigh. I'm from North Carolina. I was born in... Well, I don't need to say that because people might can use that to find my... Um, no, you can't because I got all them things on my credit. Um... Goldsboro, North Carolina. I was born in Goldsboro, North Carolina. I grew up in Pikeville, North Carolina. Larry, you want to go on a date? Not right now. Check with me about... Um, what did he say? I'm going to tell you, when, when I... After I generate a hundred or more million in one year, then check me out. 
Hey, Web Consortia. How you doing, Roslyn? Yeah, the deep country. Well, you can't halfway understand what we're saying down there. That's why I can't say some words because I never heard them said right. Never. I was raised in the country. We just, if a word got four syllables, we make it two syllables. They say Brian and Shirley Caesar can raise a mean offering, though, Larry. But that's relative. Shirley Caesar used to have George Bloomer to raise her offering, and these things have changed. I don't think Shirley, Shirley don't do good raising money. She do well in taking money. Yeah, you're going to pay Shirley, she coming the same. Your money ain't right. She not coming. Hey, Las Vegas. Everybody thinks I'm Geechee. I'm not. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I ate so good in North Carolina. This, oh, Lord. I was so blessed. Mm. We saw the play, Social Media Christmas. It was amazing. We got a chance to meet Zuri. He was... He was an amazing person. Sweet as pie. Just as sweet as he can be. Do you preach sometimes on your Patreon? Every single week. Um, I met Zuri once at Mary Mary reality show event. Great guy. I know he smiled, took a picture with you, and talked nice, didn't he? So, Larry, what's the next big story? What do we need to, to prepare for? Let me say this. My work is not like some other people's work. Don't make my work better. It's just my work. It has to already be public for me to do commentary on it. So you think I'm breaking a story, but I do not ever break stories. I don't do that work. Yes, you should join Patreon. These men are telling y'all they don't like y'all. What are you talking about, baby? I'm so shocked to hear about Zuri. He was a wonderful person praying for the family. Yeah. Hey, baby. How you doing? Mark of Beauty. I think that's God. Oh Lord. I know I see your face light skin pretty. Bill Bill Saint? I got I got that right. Um mm, Zuri was forty four. Yeah, Bashika. Um but the um that's why it hit me the way it hit me. I mean, he was just over here at this piano playing and we, and we singing. Bruh. What's up, Al, um, Alejandra Cruz? That's, that's my Mercedes car dealer. If you're in Atlanta and you need a Mercedes, go in there and, tell, and say my name. And I would like my check. You need a good place to eat in Atlanta. Any minute, mine and mo, they all over. Did you know Jeffrey as well? No, I didn't. Just no more than social media. No, I don't know him. Hey, what's up, um, Sam? How you doing? Are you ever going to do a concert of your music? Okay, I've done a concert of my music for 159,000 years. <clears throat> I just put out music for those that follow me. Like I, I'm always, always right and do music. I don't even register. Well, I do register with Nielsen, but I don't register it, you know, for for Grammys, Doves, Stellar Wars. I don't even do that no more. I, I don't. I don't have. Uh, I don't know. I just. I'm not in that space right now. Yeah. No, Jeffrey ain't died too. Jeffrey alive, good and well. You should do an in-person meet and greet. You knew. I can tell. <sighs> Busy B is good. I'm sure Tyler Perry is devastated. You know, his death is all on TMZ, Daily Mail. This is a big deal. 
So what's up, Willie Moore Jr.? What's the Willie Moore Jr.'s um, tagline? Let me tell y'all something about Willie Moore Jr. Let me tell y'all this. I told Patreon, but I never said it publicly. Okay. In June of 2022, I had to, in 50 days, generate one point something million dollars. And I did not know that I did this to myself, but I went into a space. I should have known it because that's when I stopped going to the gym and everything. I put, I went into a space. I put my head down and worked. And I did not realize until about August that I was up under extreme stress, according to the doctors, you know, a couple of steps from a stroke, da, da, da. That was very concerned that my blood pressure was high because of the symptoms I was having. So they put me on blood pressure pills before they even done my blood work and all this kind of stuff. About day four of the blood pressure pills, I was feeling funny. And I don't, that's it, flat out. And I'm going to be very, but y'all know I keep it real. I was looking down there at my pain and it was shriveled up like my pinky finger. I said, what is it? And it's like I couldn't feel it. I said, now, the whole blood of Jesus against this numb pain. So I called my doctor. I was like, look, you know, one of my doctors, me and um, TDJ share the same doctor. I said, Dr. Jill, this ain't it. Because I look like I am 10 years old, a toddler, when I go in my bathroom and look at myself in the mirror. And I'm a pretty big, tall man. So something hanging down there looking like I'm every bit of nine, this is not going to work. I'm not nine years old. So I came up off the pill. And I went and got a blood pressure machine. And I started taking my blood pressure. But I was taking it wrong. I had the metal part in the wrong place. So my blood pressure was saying I was dead. I mean, like 159,000 over 2 million. So then I quit fast in a hurry and went to my doctor in Miami. They would have said, you stress, your blood pressure is not up. You don't have to t- um, keep on medicine. So for three weeks, I had to monitor my blood pressure to make sure it was all right. And my blood pressure was fine. It was not a blood pressure issue like I was thinking. And I was just stressed. Willie, Willie Moore Jr. Let me tell you what happened. I came home. I was on my way to L.A. Shamako. Y'all know Shamako. He asked me a question. No, to Marco, aside from Lisa, you know, she, I've known her longer. Well, my cousin Latrice, which is his ex-wife, known me longer than everybody. But Lisa's like the one who is the OG. And then I met Marco afterwards. But Marco has a way. It, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's like our souls is tied. And so he asked me, he said, are you okay? And it's like, it made me do a survey of myself. I'm on my way to L.A. I flew from Miami to Atlanta to go to L.A. Because I had to finish the, the place that we put a studio over there. I said, Marco, I'm not okay. And then he got nervous because they ain't said that. Said the one, one time they had to rush me to the hospital because I was having head spasms. They thought I was having aneurysm. This is years ago. I was a teenager. I said, you, he said, well, Larry, do whatever you got to do the rest. So, I literally sat down, booked my ticket back to Miami, flew to Miami, and just, when I was flying in the plane, because let me tell you, I got a problem with rest, and I still ain't 100% done the way I need to, but I, I have been more obedient than I ever have. Willie Moore Jr., don't you be fooled now. You know, he says some stuff. He a little off the chain like me. He really keeps it more saved than me because of his job. You know, because he got to work in these different systems. But hell, if nobody but me, I'm still going to be rich. Because <laughs> uh, that's the way I built my life up. So I don't have to do all that. Um, Don't be fooled. Now, he might not be, but this tall... <laughs> Willie Moore ain't but like this tall. He about this tall. And then his children about that height. But he, he about this tall. But that 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 man has a prophetic gift. Because this ain't the only time he done something like this. But this this time was the it. 
No lie. Soon as my plane landed in Miami, he's on my phone. He said, I don't know what's going on. What's up, man? Yo, just, you know, just with the more joy that I just want you to know. And this just hit my spirit. I don't know what's up. You have got to rest. You've got to take a break. Right now, it's got to be about you. And when you do, God is going to give you direction on how to move forward and things are going to be changing. Your whole, you're going to change. I, I end up, um, I done changed so much since then, I can't tell you my business. I just started cutting, switching, changing, switching, changing. <laughs> Willie is prophetic, at least. I got to inspect this life and see if he's a prophet, but I know at least. William Moore Jr. is prophetic. Do you hear what I said? Let, let me say it one more time because you, it, you don't get, you, I, maybe you do, but you don't really get that from him like that. William Moore Jr. Let me say it again. William Moore Jr. is prophetic. The way the Lord used that little man. <laughs> Oh my God! You know I got cut up with it. I won't never forget it. I won't. You know, could, very possibly could have saved my life. Who knows? Because see, I have to hear some. Oh, I'm not obedient. Well, I'm gonna say that back. I am obedient, but I'm rebellious. Um, so I don't take. Much, and it's like I would hear that play in my head because I once I start feeling good, I'm going right back at it. During that same time, I hadn't seen my masseur in a while. He, and I used to fly him wherever I'm at. But he had to do some stuff because he acts, an uh, actor as well. So, and a physical trainer. So I hadn't seen him for like eight days. And I was staying long in Miami. You know, my mattress and stuff here, you know, $5,000 mattress. But I had to put one down there because I don't be staying all, all the time. But I stayed long. So while I'm trying to rest, I'm getting sicker and sicker, but my blood pressure's not high. I said, why? I keep having spasms. My head was hurting. It was making my stomach hurt. I said, oh, my God. I wonder where it's going. Ow! And then the spirit gave me an inspiration and said, it's this raggedy, cheap mattress. I mean, it, for me, it was, it was cheap because my chiropractor told me I got to have a firm, um, what you call them mattress? Tempur-Pedic. The firm ones. And there's a whole story behind that. Um, on how what I did to myself from sleeping on the floor for 20 something years, but there's a whole story to that. And anyway, so I got down there and I couldn't even walk, y'all. I sure did. I got to do Sunday morning prayer and I stood up to do Sunday morning prayer. And every bone in my body Feel like it, the guy had a sharp pain. I lay back down, down grab my phone. The saints ain't in I'm doing prayer, prophecy. Uh, we um, getting the people to worship with their seed and you know t doing everything on the other end. They ain't know what we're going. They getting blessed, and I am in pain. Now Marco knew it, and so that got the thing. And I felt you know because you're in the spirit. And I got up to stand up again, and I couldn't walk again. I said, now this is the problem. So I rolled over there in the chair. I called. Remember, so I said, okay, you back out of back from out of town? Yeah. Can you get on a plane and come in right now? Yeah. He got there, set up the massage table. I rolled up out of the chair into the massage table. And when he put his hand on my back, I was, ow! It, it hurt! He said, you got a bad end to it. And done that for almost two hours. But after that, I was able to walk. So that Willie Moore Jr., Yeah, I have a stretch person too. Her name Danielle. Mm -hmm. You must be a patron. You know, you know a little whole lot about whole lot. Sorry to interrupt, but I need y'all to go purchase Larry new CD. I'm delivering. It's a it's a song with me and Carson Pearson. Yeah, go get it like they said. 
$200. He said, rich people problems, child, my $200 sleep just fine. When you get older, that ain't going to be, you ain't going to do it. It's called He Delivers. I was just saying with my mom that I needed a new mattress. I also came to the realization today that I've never had a brand new mattress as an adult. I've got to do better. See? See? See, this, I told you this is why we in Patreon. We are the same people. I, I didn't do that for myself. I had to do it for, for myself. And, and it was for my health. Yeah. He's single. Who's single? Is Willa Moore single? I think I can say yes, he is. He is. But I don't think he's dating. I don't think he's dating right now. Willa Moore, are you dating now? Hold on, I'm on my other phone. You can text me on this. <laughs> on my real phone. You got my real number. Um... Let me see. You may tell me. Willa Moore, are you dating now? Oh, because of me, you got a stretcher? Good black people. Listen to me. Now, I'm just talking to the niggas right now. You need to go to the Cavador and Pratt, You need to get a stretchologist. And you also need to get them a sewer. It's not terribly expensive. Now, if you go buy them wigs and get your hair done, let's cut back something. Turn the chiropractor now and do a little adjustment for $20, 30 $40. You go to um, Stretch Zone. I'm trying to tell you. My dad, my dad right now limping and act like he's 150 here, but 69, 68. Because they ain't never been to a chiropractor in their whole life. Does insurance cover massages? No. It should, but it don't. And insurance and news don't care, cover chiropractor. Oh, she got good insurance. So her insurance cover the chiropractor. You got that good guy. All right, I think I done ran my mouth enough up here on this thing. Hey, baby, mailed the messenger. See, she's one of the members of the church, and she married to a woman, and they sweet as pie and love the Lord, filled with the Holy Ghost. I think. I think she is filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, my church is lit and regular, but powerful. Oh, you said insurance does cover massages once you meet deductible, depending on the state you live. Okay, see. I ain't know that. Okay. You said some insurance. Okay, so y'all told me something I did not know. Mine too. Y'all bougie. These must be patrons. <laughs> Tongue talking. See, that she got older. Um, you had a bad experience with a chiropractor? Oof. That's not something to have a bad experience with. That can mess up everything for a long piece of time. All right, I think I'm done. And I guess I'll keep this up so that whoever can come back and watch it. And um, remember, get it done. Zuri died 44, just like the age I am sitting right here on this floor. And he died with stuff undone. A big show it was supposed to happen in a few weeks that was rehearsing for so y'all need to go ahead on and, and do what the hell y'all been anointed and appointed and assigned and gifted to do and quit your mess. And don't pay these, these people no mind. I'm going to tell you something. Don't never listen to folk who are doing less than what you're doing. Who gives a ruck what they are saying? Only thing they can do is have an opinion about something they imagining about that you're actually doing and is your real reality. Do what you're supposed to be doing. You hear what I said? Get it done. Let me say it one more again. Get it done in the face of your enemies and in the face of difficulty. 
Some stuff you got to do scared any darn way. So go ahead and jump on out there and get with it. Some use as simple as turning on your darn phone and talking in it just like I'm doing. I couldn't, I didn't like doing this because I didn't like the way that I looked. I still don't like how my skin like to fold up on me and bump up and get and hair bumps. I get hair bumps. I, let me tell you, I had a hair bump so bad right here. Now, you know, that right there in the inside your thigh is sensitive. I get hair bumps that can be de debilitating. And I had one that was so ugly, it stayed for so months. So many months, it was sitting right at the top of, um, right at the top, and the hair low near the top of my pink. I couldn't, if I wanted to get some head, I couldn't get no head, not for somebody that um that probably know what they're doing, because you're supposed to lick all that part. I mean, you, you're not just supposed to, you're supposed to minister to the top side, the shaft, you know, and, you know, where it connect to your, you know, to your body. You lick all around it and the balls are there. I couldn't do that. Couldn't think I had something. Terrible thing. Painful. <clears throat> so I still don't like how my skin like to do stuff. But thanks be to God, there's some socks you can get. And y'all think it's expensive. It ain't that expensive. How, remember my four look like sausage? Botox. It ain't that expensive. I got, here you go right here. Here right here. I have a hair bump right now, right there. But this thing ain't gonna be the back of this guy. Put some warm compress on it and it'll come off. It's gonna leave a spot for a little while. But just because I went down there to Miami and let this woman do my my um, laser hair removal, that's really what helped my skin a lot here. I just get on bumps here and everywhere. She didn't go all the way up here because I got hair follicles all the way up here and, the, and her thing wasn't that strong. See what I'm talking about? Turn that camera on talk with a hair bump in your face. It, it don't even matter. Do what you're supposed to do. Get it done. Do not let nothing stop. I don't have no that problem no more because I called LaCorn. I said, look, you need to come over here with that. He something he put in a syringe. That's how he got rid of them there and shot that bump. And now it's smooth. You know, okay, hardly got no hair. I would show y'all. Oh, I can do that kind of stuff on, on my um. <laughs> on my OnlyFans, although it's gonna be sex talk, but I might show you a little stuff. I ain't gonna show you. The, I ain't gonna show you God's gift, the holy rod of God. But I can show you that part where it was, and then probably have Laquan to come on and talk about that. Cause some of y'all may have some skin tags or something you don't like. You think it costs hundred dollars? It was thirty dollars. I think I gave him a hundred, but it was like thirty dollars. That hair bump went down there, twins my legs. It hurt so bad. <laughs> <sighs> I thought I was gonna die. I had to walk wildly like I was bow leg, more than what I am. He went right up in there, shot that thing, stuck that needle in there, cause it was like five hair bumps and one under my skin trying to come through, so it had that whole area swollen, hurting. He left one piece. Though I felt that that's a, I might need a shot right there, but it don't look like it. But I can feel it up on the skin. He took that needle in there, shot that thing in there. And the next morning I woke up, my God, everything was proper. Went hard down there the, 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 where the bumps was. Because um, it was under the skin, you couldn't see them. It was just swole up. And it was sensitive to touch and sit down. I had to sit a certain kind of way. Like, oh, this is not the life. Mm -mm. It's not the case no more. God is good. All right. Um... Uh, let me let y'all go. Wow, I thought about getting Botox. Take your hand in it. Because when I lift my ball like this, now you only move a little bit here. Now, I didn't get my lavins done, so I can still do this. But I could have got that all froze. And I didn't need to do this. Kendall got this done and that done and mock them because they got crow's feet bad. Mm, that come from lying. Folk that got crow's feet, they lie a lot. If you hadn't been lying so much, you wouldn't have no crow's feet. But that's the only thing I had done. Oh, then I had a lot of skin work done because I was black right here. You know, T.D. Jake's like that. Somebody been telling Richard he is. He black right there. I was black right there. So they had him. They I had to do like a six month process for that. Do what the hell you need to do. And it ain't that. It's that. But that was expensive. That was expensive. And my teeth. So a lot of people say, "Oh, yours is so nice." 
Let me tell you something. These folks go overseas, pay $8,000, and they get these chompers. This is still my... If you watch my videos, it's the same size teeth. It's just much wider because I got Hollywood white... Um, see, this is stuff I'm going to be doing on my OnlyFans. It's going to be so transparent. It's going to be everything. And it's like a thin porcelain covering over each tooth. But I still got my teeth shaped. But before that, now the sh they, I could have went overseas, paid seven or eight thousand dollars, and they put them chompers on top. Cause what they do, if your bite ain't right, they just put the covering on it good enough to where it, it, it gives you a. Don't fix your bite, and next thing you know, it's cracking left to the right, to the left to the right. Mm -mm. So I went through a year and some change of ortho of them correcting my bite. Cause you see, your bottom teeth supposed to go up under your front teeth. See like that? Like that? But mine came together perfectly. And so it, it, it had a jagged edge. And it's a hereditary thing, too. I had to get my children teeth braces and stuff to fix their bite. Don't have to deal with that no more. Yeah. My baby mama talking about, you still alive? You still watching? This is my job with my, my lead generator. Yeah. If you stop lying, you won't. Can I say I have crow's feet and that is hereditary? Because y'all have a lying spirit that run through your family. Like Shamako doing his family. That's why he had crow's feet. Because there's a generation of lying. Bleaching cream. Yes. No, because y'all remember my up under my eyes was black. I skip nights, so sometimes. Now see, y'all thought I had, had got fillers. You see, I still got that, that crease and bag. But when I dyed this right here, it just made it look like that I had some work done, but I didn't. Because, see, all of this is the, the color my skin always was right here. But I had another color here, another color here. So, the, what that bleaching cream did, it, it matched my skin here to here. And then it made this match here. It made this match here. It's a, it's, it has a light bleaching thing in it. You know, but that's what you have to do if you... It's hyperpigmentation. If you got hyperpigmentation, you're going to have to correct it. You ain't got to, but I wanted to. Yep. It took some years off, too. You say you want to get yours done, you're so scared. What you want to get done, baby? What you scared of? And if you're a woman, if you had a baby and you scared it for a needle, now I don't know what's going on with you. Because if you can pu push a whole baby out, you'll push... At your puss, you is a superhero. Somebody said, Can you crunch crab though? Yes, I did not go overseas. But do you know you really are supposed to be eating with your molars? You're not supposed to be eating with just, just, just you're supposed to eat all in the back. But I, I do. I do still eat with the front. The hard stuff I put back there. Mm hmm. Need teeth done, get it done. Lisa said, do you do their braces? No, I did not do their braces. Lisa done their braces because Lisa was the one in the military. When we got divorced, she took me off to where I could not get anything done if I got sick or cold or nothing. I thought that was real dirty and nasty to do that to me like that, Ben, that I supported you the 20 years you was in the military. You could have at least let me keep the ID so I can use it to get 20% off at Golden Corral and other places. But since you didn't want to do that, she was able to keep it for the girls. Praise God. So she put the braces on the girl's mouth. Is that enough praise for you today? God. <laughs> I'm so used to saying I do everything, but no, I didn't do that. Let me correct that. What's the name of the cream? Oh, Lord, Jesus. I done did this a thousand times online. Come in Patreon is post. Didn't I post it in the Patreon? I'm going to post it in Patreon tonight. So you join Patreon and you'll see the name of it. All right. Hello, Genesis Wall Run. I'm going to put it in Patreon. Join Patreon. I'll put it in now. Baby, what is you on this live talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about Zuri Craig, but these folks done took me down to sex and, and money and the Bible and preachers. 
It's amazing what they done did of him. Oh, that's my ex accountant. Hey, Mr. Bankston. <laughs> Why are you on here talking about Larry Lee Reed? You know, you got Mark calling me Larry Lee. Lee is not my middle name. Mr. Bankston, thank you for all of your service that you have done. He done went on to better things. But he used to be my accountant. Um, you can use mine, your what? <laughs> yes, the golden co round. Thank you. You divorced me first, so shat. <laughs> okay. Listen, you do not want to do this right here because this, this is not going to go in your favor. Because even in my divorcing you, I still kept, took care of your high, juicy yellow hand. So don't do that to me. I didn't, I didn't do like these other niggas would do. Mm -mm. I made sure you were set. Now, then I went mind my business and you had a little struggle from what you told me, but you still was all right. You had that military check coming. But let's talk about when you left me. Uh-huh. You remember when me calling, asking for $200 a month? It's my limit, ask my spouse. That you just met last year? And you know me since Jesus was a baby. Do not have that conversation up here. You said not better, but different. Oh, so uh, Eddie, you saying that working for me was better than the new job you went to? Oh, oh. I believe that because I'm, you know, just I am the best. How y'all look at it? Because now you, you hire contractors. They say, I'm their client. Yeah, I am your client. But if I, but if I stop being your client, is you going to have a business? <laughs> so I take it. I'll be your client. So it is very good to have me as a client because I am, I am the best. Because you're not just going to get paid, your invoice get paid at the end of the month. But I'm going to make you a part of my family. You're going to be around because, you know, you, you're helping me win. I'm, I'm going to do stuff. Ed, Eddie, for his birthday, I think I took him to Neiman Marcus or somewhere and spent like $6,000 on labels. Because y'all know these Atlanta hoes. <clears throat> excuse me. You know these Atlanta sis. Excuse me. Hold on. You know these Atlanta folk like to have labels on and they ain't got the $10,000 in their account. Why is you wearing a $1,500 shoe and you ain't got the $10,000 in your account? That, your, that does not make you. ain't got no business wearing them labels. Now, what you need to do is use your soft middle part or either the bread basket that's on your back to sleep with, front play around with the person who can afford to buy you what it is that you want. You ain't got to use your money to do it. You just use what God gave you as a means of exchange. So you keep building your bank account. That's what you're supposed to do. So... When because I'm like that with everybody, when I started doing that with Eddie around, then rumors go out saying we sleep together. No, we was not sleeping together. Eddie does not know if I am a man or a woman down here. Cause nowadays you can't really tell. Let me see now. Oh, well, it was sex, he said. Now y'all can't tell he no um accountant when you go to his page and look at all the nakedness, but he is. You say, you know what? Add me to the line. <laughs> I don't know what the word you're going to say. Your mouth is loose. Somebody said, that gum is nasty. Yeah, I chew gum terrible. There's, nobody likes me to be on live and, um, and chew gum. So sorry. Um, Lisa still had to ask her spouse. No, she ain't. It was her money. Her spouse was broke. Y'all gonna get me my feelings. Mm -mm -mm -mm. At least to come in here and start and stuff. <laughs> Lisa, you see almost at back of the house. Lisa been down there in the country. She said she was at her aunt house, but I really don't know where she was. But she been gone missing for two or three days. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Yeah, this is the OnlyFans combo. Yeah, if you're not on my OnlyFans, you need to get on my Only Only Um Fans. 
OnlyFans.com slash Larry Reed Live. We're going to be going live over there and talking about it all. I'm going to put this flyer up at some point. But I've got a big show coming up this week, so I'm not going to... I may announce it on the big show. Um, but y'all got to be following me now so y'all know what's going on. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a, a... Your mouth going to drop when you see who it is. And we're going to have a real conversation. So, uncensored conversation. About sex, sexuality, with Larry Reed and special guests. I already done found somebody to be a special guest to talk about the world of massage and sex work. I said, you going to let me, you going to have that, that conversation? Yeah. How much we got to have in our account before we wear labels? <laughs> you don't want to get me in that conversation because I'm, I'm really strict about that. Do you know how many, listen. I'm I'm really strict about that. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's just what I think. I tell y'all, I count I count quarters. So we need to prostitute. You can call it whatever you want to. It's it's exchange. I mean you you can put prostitution on it. I think it's just business sense. Let me tell y'all women something. You have a puss. If you have one, write it in the chat so we know what, what we, how we get the nut with you. Or we got to use the front end or the back end. They don't just, I know they make pussies now. They're making the silicone little things you put in their pocket puss and stuff like that. But let me tell you this now. They ain't but one, now the only puss on the face of this earth that's similar to a woman's is a sheep. Now I'm from the country, don't ask me how I know. But one of my friends is to go out there with the sheep. And let's just say he do you hear the sheep bah <laughs> Because them sheep, they're just like woman puss. But other than that, God ain't done that twice. So if you know you got a hot commodity that you can't buy out of Kmart, Walmart, JC Penny Nichols, I'm roses. Is this store still open? I don't think it's been so long. Um Sam's, um, TJ Maxx, you can't go down there and get them up at, at the Neiman Marcus. And you don't have no money? Somebody else got some money that would love to be able to at least seal a sniff you put a touch it a little bit or a little bit one time. And would do it for a dollar amount. You have the conversation, but see, them someone says, you call it prostitution. I call it being transparent and being very focused on what it is that you want out of this relationship. You need to have a conversation about that. You do not have no business broke and you have a puss. That's dumb. That's dumb. Hear me when I say it. That's the dumbest thing on the face of this earth for you to be broke and you got a puss. That is stupid. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> it ain't prostitution. We should not be having this conversation under this title about Zuri's death. Y'all done took me and put me way over there somewhere else. This is a uh uh uh, uh, uh only fans conversation. I ain't gonna be able to save this. I ain't gonna be able to save this video. I'm just had to just get rid of this video. Puss will sell before anything else. I sold it and ain't even have one to sell. <laughs> it is stupid. I'm trying to tell you what the truth is. And y'all give it up too fast. Do you, do you know? And you don't give and don't give it up off. Don't give it up often. You give it up fast and often after you don't got a ring and he don't put you in the house. Now you can be a career woman. You make six figures a year yourself, but he need to have the capacity. To handle you financially, you don't give it up frequently and in any given time, and just and just be like a starfish, just legs open all the time. You don't do that until after he you married. Before then, you pinch out little pieces of puss here and there, and you keep checking to see what kind of exchange is going on in your account. 
You say, well, I done got that lump there and that's done, that's paid. I ain't got to worry about this. I ain't got to worry about that. Let me go ahead and get this man something. I've been wanting to give him something anyway. He's doing real good. Y'all hand it out too fast. You do it too quick. Mm -mm, can't do that. You have a hot commodity. God ain't did that twice. He have not done it twice. Why you don't have no money? Mm -mm. We said a wet ass and a dry pocket don't match. It don't. Somebody said, that's why I don't understand women sleeping around for free and screwing broke men. It's the dumbest thing in the world. It's dumb. It don't make sense. It's an exchange of goods and services. Absolutely. Lisa said, these stores, you name it. It was what came to my mind. You know, I grew up in the country. And poor. Right, people selling puss for a crystal snack box. That's, that's a shame. I'm going to tell you this. If I, some of the people make jokes to my, okay, Larry's the bottom, he riding, peeing stuff. That's not true. If it was true, I would tell you guys. And if it was the truth, my money wouldn't have bought and purchased none of this you looking at. It would have been his money. Are you, are you hearing me? Because I'm, I'm a businessman. Mm -mm. Y'all not making no sense. If I had the capacity to open up my bread basket to receive pins pretty easily, oh, I, I, let me tell you this. Mm -mm -mm. Just to think about the kind of money I would have. I wouldn't give it up to nobody if I'm not getting nothing. And you got a whole puss that's self-lubricating. Now, some of these bottoms out here, there's lubricate just like y'all, just like a vagina. But I'm just generalizing. You got a self-lubricating machine sitting down there in the middle of your soul. And you don't have no money. That's Lisa coming in. You don't have no money. There's something wrong with that. Mm. Totally disagree with you on this one. Oh, we don't have to agree. And your disagreement does not make me wrong. See, somebody said this conversation too much for my ears. That's why I have OnlyFans. Conversations like this will be happening at OnlyFans.com slash Larry Relive. Go ahead and sign up. Why it's cheap? Because it's going up. No, bro. Women need to have morals out here. I see you have morals and broke. Because what you do, you can have all them high morals, and then you're going to end up sleeping with somebody broke. You said what? <laughs> am I lying, though? Tim, this, am I lying? Yeah. Okay, man. Y'all look, look at Lisa, how, how pretty she look. And she talking about she was at her aunt house. I wear this all the time. You weren't at your aunt house wearing a cat suit. Reed, I wear this as a jumpsuit from Adidas. I wore it all the time. And it's fitted. You told me to stop wearing too big clothes. Don't use my stuff. It ain't fitted enough. You see? <laughs> oh, my God. That... She won't be more at her aunt house than a man in the moon. Um, yeah. Let's see. I forgot what I was saying. Well, if you want to go in the amusement park, you have to pay to get on the roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, teaching here, Daryl. Uh, Darrell. Queen, um, Queen said, I'm preaching and teaching. I know I am. I, I know. I know that does not make no sense. You know, uh, let, let me tell you something. Let's say, let's say because y'all might not understand. My mama, Ethelene Reed, Fleming Reed, one of the Fleming sisters, she don't have to work, but she goes to work and she puts her check in her account. And she's been doing it for years. 
My mama don't pay bills. You know why? She got a puss. If the lean reason ain't going to ever be broke. If my daddy died right there, my mama probably can live off the money she got for, for 30 years. You, it does not make sense. To my Lord, give me a business. I need an LLC. No. You need a charge for the services that you are given freely. That's your business. Okay. Now let me just totally let me just get off this because this I feel something coming on me now. I'm gonna get turned up and not be able to sleep. Hmm. Larry, take them to the book of Genesis where Tamar had to lay up with her father-in-law to get their inheritance. See, Eddie, the people don't like good preaching. They don't like good preaching. They don't like it. Just be clear, you're not selling puss. They're paying you for your time. Anything that happens is between two consent. <laughs> uh, that's the legal way to do it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. Stop giving it away free. This is what you're supposed to take out of my conversation. Not that you go sell your puss. But that you you put a price tag. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, put a price tag on because you're giving it up free. Fuck with bad credit. They stand with their mama. They, they, they ain't got no 401k. Um, they, they, they don't have no, they, they ain't got no money. It does not make no sense. Two struggling people. What y'all gonna do? Rub quarters to get quarters together and whisper sweet nothings in each other's ear in the dark. That is the dumbest. I seen some of the other labels dumb as on the way in Miami. You used to seeing um people begging and panhandling. But there was a man and a woman together. In a relationship, homeless together. Two people with no money. Two people. My brain can't figure that. I don't understand that. Two people. Two whole, well-abled bodies. Because they were talking and walking. Those tell me you can't work. And y'all don't have no money twins, y'all. You just got air and kisses and hugs. Somebody in the relationship said, look, have a conversation. She, that woman should have said, you know what, man, baby? Let me have a conversation with you. I love you and everything, but you don't have no job, but God has given me something. See, what you got, your opinion, there are millions of them. But what God has given me, he only made once. Ain't nothing else on the earth with it. Now, the sheep come pretty close. but and when was, So I'm going to go and I'm going to gather some monies using what God has given me. It don't make no sense for the woman I have no money. I just can't figure that out. It just don't make sense and you don't have to spend your money, neither. Let me get out of this. Cause y'all, y'all, y'all not, y'all, we're not gonna see eye to eye on this. We're just not, cause it makes no sense to me. Mm. Black families are falling apart because of this ideology. No, black families are falling apart because of fathers are missing. So don't put that on the women. There ain't nothing that the women do. No. Women have been saving the family and trying to hold it together for I don't know how long. You talking bullshit. It's not true. And you like you a man. Shut up. You, don't, you, is you a father? Is you a husband? Where are your children right now? I, but, mm -mm. Any man that's a real man Know that the women are not the downfall of nobody. Family. Oh, no, that's not the truth. 
No, it's not. It's our black asses. Oh my God. Let me now come. See, y'all get me. I think y'all say stuff in the chat just for me to get turned up. Hmm. Oh my God. See, a lot of men don't like me talking like this because they've been getting free puss. See, women fall in love with what they hear. Them snakes, they, they get the hissing in your ear like your mama, Eve. She listened to that snake hissing. And they're able to talk you out your parents. And then you let them play games all day and hang out with their boys. And you go to work, pay bills, and that kind of going on. A lot of men don't like me talking like this. Because when the women get smart, they're not laying up for free. And they're requiring time gifts, respect, money. You know what I'm saying? So don't like me talking like that. So if you see me post something like that and say something like that, empowering women, the men go down that center, you know, then that's a raggedy man. And I done told y'all, if you don't like what the hell I say over here, go on your page talking about me. Just spell my name wrong, but don't come on my page talking about me because I'm going to block your ass and then send you where you belong. Because why, why the hell is you here? Now, we don't have to agree. But then you don't need you only be saying what I'm saying is evil, the devil, uh, harmful. Uh, don't, don't, don't pass no judgment on what I'm saying. I don't pass no judgment on saying you can just say that I disagree. Somebody else said it. I said, okay, we don't have to agree. We went on. But then you had to come here and talk sideways. Go to hell. What? Go to hell. What? Shut up as loud as you can. All right, let me go. Well, y'all be blessed, and I love each and every one of you. Turn your notifications on because I'm popping up Tuesday with the guest. And you do not want to, we're going to be in the big studio. You do not, unless something happens, go wrong because niggas is funny. But they called me today and scheduled it. So I'll talk to you guys later. Rest in peace, Zuri.